like loss. Um, my name is Michael Conner, I'm with Commerce Guys, and I'm going to be doing a, um, probably not quite a full hour, um, but a presentation on, on tips and tricks for Ubercart, uh, specifically more geared towards developers, um, but if you're not a developer, hopefully you can still get some good information out of it, but we are going to be looking at some code. Um, we're going to be covering, for the most part, uh, one of my favorite things, which is conditional actions. So, um, see if I can get this going. So how many people here have ran Ubercard? Cool. How many people have done any Ubercard development? Cool. How many people know what traditional actions is for? All right. Um, so real briefly, um, uh, Eric, can I have your PowerPoint? Yep. <laughs> Jolly Rancher. Jolly Rancher! <laughs> I just need that part. I actually don't have that. I just need to go this right here. Oh, so I can't wait to sell that. Sure. So, conditional actions is a system you use as you're doing Uber cart development to allow the end user to control some of the, the settings on the site. And it's kind of like um, triggers and actions in core, except it allows you to, to control um, whether the action is fired based on conditions, based on the information that's passed to it. Um, a great example, kind of the first thing I'll show you, is using conditional actions to control flat rate shipping. Flat rate shipping is one of the real nice shipping modules in Ubercart because it allows you to add multiple instances of flat rate shipping and then control which one is displayed to the client based upon different information on the order. So, I'm going to start by enabling the shipping modules. For that, we just need shipping quotes and flat rate. Okay, so once we have flat rate enabled, we can go into configurations, go into shipping quote settings. If I'm clicking around too fast, you can tell me to slow down, but um, I just want to set up two flat rate methods real quick so we can show off conditional actions. Um,
So the use case I'll show you real quick is we're going to do ground shipping and then we're going to do Michigan ground for just people living in Michigan. I'm from Michigan, um, so we should use that example. You'll notice we have the conditions link over here, which is an easy way to go into conditional actions. And this is the, the conditional actions interface. Um, let me step back for a second. Each of these items are called predicates. A predicate is a combination of conditions and actions that's called when a particular trigger is fired. Um, so the trigger right here is a payment gets entered for an order. The predicate is um, update the order status to full payment. Or update this order status on full payment. We are going to come down to the trigger um, get shipping rate quotes. And we've got shipping rate quote via ground. We also have um, the trigger get shipping rate quote via Michigan ground. Um, we're going to edit the ground one and add a condition that says only return this if the person is not in Michigan. Then we're going to go to the Michigan one and say only return this if the person is in Michigan. So you've got some general metadata about the predicates. Then you have a conditions tab where you can go in and select from the available conditions. We're going to say where the shipping address or the shipping state is not Michigan. And then we're going to go to our other predicate. say where the shipping state is in Michigan. One thing I'll show you with conditional actions is conditional, um, or rather with the shipping quote, is you'll see that there's not actually an action in here. Um, that's because you can also use conditional actions to just evaluate things to see uh, it will return a true or false, and then you can decide in your, in your code whether you want to do X, Y, or Z. Um, that's what the flat rate module does. It uses conditional actions to provide you with the interface to decide whether to return the quote or not. Um, this is a in this scenario, or in this um, way, it's a little odd compared to some of the other ones. But either way, if I go to my widget and check out, I've got Tennessee, and I just see ground as an option. And if I change this to Michigan, I see that it now says um, 250 for Michigan ground. So does that make sense to everybody? Pretty straightforward. This conditional actions is really just a, a user interface for making business rule decisions in Ubercard. Um, it's one of the things that I think really sets Ubercard apart from some other systems. Um, at the end of the day, Drupal and Ubercart make it really easy to customize the store to meet your customer's needs. Um, your customer being the, the client operating the store in most cases, or yourself, I suppose. Um, conditional actions provides um, some, some hooks that make it easy to extend the system. Um, you've got your hook CA condition, which allows you to add custom conditions where you can pass in arguments in order to decide whether to return true or false. You also have hook CA action where you can add custom actions uh, to do X, Y, and Z. And then you also have hook CA predicate. Hook CA predicate allows you to, in your code, define um, 
the conditional action combination so that it's already there for your customer. Um, so if you're a module developer and you want to make sure that when somebody enables a shipping quote or a shipping method, you have a conditional action setting there waiting for them to configure, you can do that with Hook CA Predicate. Um, there's also the ability to add entities, which are what you use to evaluate against, um, but that's usually you don't have to work with that very much. What I'm going to show you real quick is some code for a module I'm creating called UCRMA, and it allows you to do returns through UberCard. It's not released yet. Um, hopefully, we'll be releasing it in the next week or two, but it's... Um, one of the more recent items I've done with conditional actions and it's still kind of fresh in my mind. So, to start with, um, I'm going to show you conditions. So you implement that with hook UC condition. So you'll see right here I've got my UCRMA CA condition. With that, you return an array. And that array is made up of um, your different conditions keyed by, um, I usually choose to key it by the callback name, although I don't know that that's really a requirement. You have um, a title option, which is just uh, what you used to define what your conditions call. You can do a longer description. You can set it as a category, which let me go into a condition real quick. So here you'll see you have the items in bold. That's the category. If we scroll down, we have the return category for all the different conditions we've added for the UCRMA module. Um, those conditions are all here. Um, UCRMA return condition, um, return status. That just checks against the status of the return that you've, um, you're working with. I also have a condition to check um, to check the status of the individual items on the return. Uh, I have a condition to check to see if what you're returning is the entire order versus just a partial return. Um, and I have a condition for the reason you're returning it. So you'll see one of the simple, uh, simplest ones is um, the return status. In that case, Let me add a new one here. Your options are just any of the available reasons for returning the product. Um, so, you know, in this case, you can you know select if if the return status is refunded, um, then you can maybe close the return. Um, there's two items to the condition. There's the callback itself, which you define with the callback parameter, and that just is the, the name of the function. Um, actually, right here is the name of the function. There's also the form that gets automatically called by UCRMA, uh, or rather by um, the, the hook um, CA condition. Um, the, the form is just your callback name underscore form. For that, you use the form API, um, just like you would with any other custom form. Um, the form um, and the, condi the condition itself both receive an uh, array of settings. It's basically what you would see if you're writing a form cement handler. You get the uh, form values array. Um, was it form state? with the uh, parameters values, 
Um, that just gets passed in. Usually we just call it the setting. So you'll see my condition here. I'm telling it that I'm going to have an order argument and an RMA argument. And then the function takes the order and RMA parameters as well as the settings itself. You'll see that the uh, allowed statuses is simply the form allowed statuses item. It's pretty straightforward. And in this case, you just simply return true or false. If you click this negate this condition, um, the conditional actions framework will automatically um, return the opposite. So you don't have to do anything within your condition to allow for that. It does it for you. So that's how you do a, a custom condition. Um, you know, some quick maybe examples of things you might use that for. Um, if maybe you're doing a marketing promotion and you want to discount the price of a product to people who come in from a certain um, Git parameter, you could you know write some custom code that captures that Git parameter on their first page view, stores it, and then during checkout automatically gives them a discount. Um, all sorts of things. It's it's really useful. The other item is the hook CA action. <clears throat> so the action is what actually does something. You use conditions to evaluate whether you want to do something. The action itself is what does it. In this case, I have two actions. I've got an action for updating the return status. I've got an action. I guess I'm pointing to my screen, which you can't see. We've got an action for um, actually providing a refund, which right now isn't fully functional. But you'll see I'm passing the same order and RMA arguments for both. You'll see right here for the, um, for the refund form, I'm not actually putting a form out there. Um, you don't need to return a form. You don't even need to have a uh, function to generate the form. Um, conditional actions will just ignore it if it's uh, not returned or not defined. So the easier of the two here is the action to update the return status. Let me go to that real quick. You'll see in this case, um, if the return is complete, then I'm saying that we need to give them a refund and um, then set, set the status to refunded. Um, so I've got the possible statuses here as my form elements. And you'll see in the code, here's my, my status form. Um, and if that action is pulled, I grab the whatever setting is defined in that form, and then I uh, set my RMA object to, update, to the updated status, and then I save it. So that's about as simple of an action as you can get. Um, there's also a, a default action to just provide a message to the end user. Um, actions are pretty handy. The other thing that I'm doing in this module is providing a a refund for all of the items that are uh, approved on the return. Um, not fully functional with a payment gateway yet, but it's um, it's sort of functional in that it, it um, saves a message to the order. Um, so in this case, it's a little more complicated. Um, looking at all the items on the return, and if they are in the refund status, then I add that to the total refund. And um, then you'll see that it just uh, marks a payment, sets the status to complete, um, adds a comment, and saves stuff. So again, fairly straightforward. It's a really good way for you, know, you as a module developer to add some custom stuff that you allow your end users to have control over. Um, so the next thing, is everybody sort of with me? 
Um, so the next thing that's really cool about this is it's a lot of work to, uh, you know, every site you install to either write the directions on how to set up, you know, this custom predicate, which is, you know, if the, all the items are set to a completed status um, and, you know, a payment method is on hand, then let's go ahead and process the refund. Um, it's really kind of ugly and unneeded. So what we've done is used hook CA predicate as a way to take this predicate here, which is the metadata, the conditions, and the actions, and define that in, in an array. And then every time the, uh, you know, the condition stuff is loaded, we say, oh, yeah, we already have this condition on file. Let's us execute it when this trigger is pulled. So um, the, the use case as the module developer is you have you know, two or three things that need to happen for your module to function. You want to set up some default use cases, but you want to allow your customers to customize it for their particular use case. A uh, good example here is um, with this module, the end client um, has four or five really oddball custom configurations that I don't want to embed into this um, system, but they've also got some general stuff that I do want to embed into UCRMA. So um, to do that, we're going to use hook CA predicate. So with hook CA predicate, um, you are just returning an RMA, or rather, I'm sorry, you're, you're returning an array of your already defined predicates. With that, you've got some general metadata. You have um, the important part is the trigger it's being executed on. Then you have your conditions element, which um, defines the operator. Let me come back over here so you can have something to compare against. So in this case, we're saying if all, um, all the conditions are true, which is the same as here if all the conditions are true. Here are the individual conditions themselves. Um, so we've got the status, the options that we're defining ahead of time. Um, so that's the conditions section. You also have the action section where you say what's going to happen if those conditions evaluate to true. And that's it. Um, let me go ahead and uninstall this real quick. So uninstall, you'll see that all the RMA stuff is gone. And if I install it, that'll come back. The important thing here is that although these items are defined in code, You can go in here and edit them, and your user edits will override what you have in code. So you can still give the customer the flexibility to modify it, but um, it's something that you can help them out by defining it ahead of time. The one other item I'll show you with this.
is uh, CA pull trigger. This is how the um, the items get uh, the predicates get fired to begin with. So in this case, I've got a form cement handler for managing the individual returns. So this is what the um, store owner sees on the back end. And after the the form is submitted and after I've done everything, I then pull the trigger that says, hey, this RMA was just updated. Does anybody need to do anything to it? That fires any predicate that has the trigger UC return updated, or I'm sorry, UC RMA return updated um, defined, and then goes through the course of action of defining whether, or deciding whether to pull those, or run those actions or not. Does that make sense? So that's kind of the back end of conditional actions. That's how you can use conditional actions in your modules to do some cool stuff that your users can control. Um, any questions there? All right. So the only other thing I'll show you is right now you have to look through and basically copy that predicate <coughs> form. A good way to get it is to look at um, one of the shipping methods that has predicates defined already, maybe um, taxes that already have predicates defined. Um, the order model, I think, module also has some predicates as well. Um, hopefully in the future we're going to have something like this enabled where you can go in and build a custom predicate and then click export and it will generate that for you and then you can just copy it and paste it into code. Um, that's in a patch in the UberCart issue queue. We're still working on a good way to define it. Um, we're kind of deciding whether we should use like some sort of XML interface. Um, my vote right now is going for this as kind of like the simple, just dump it into your code and, and have it as a predicate. Um, jury's still out, we'll see what the end result is, but hopefully in the near future, you'll have that. In the meantime, if it's something that um, you want, you can look in the issue queue and there's a patch for it. So the other thing I wanted to show you is, um, or I guess I'll talk about real briefly, um, I find that embedding stuff like this in code, um, particularly like the end predicates, works really well if you're doing like a multi-person development environment, or even if you're just developing stuff and you have your local machine as your dev server, and you've got your client's live machine, it really sucks to have to go into the interface and click you know, 30 or 40 times to set up five different predicates. With this, um, using the hook CA predicate, or you can do the same thing with views, you can do something like that kind of with CCK, it makes your job as a developer a lot easier, and then six months down the road, you can look at it when something breaks and say, oh yeah, I added that, and here's what I changed, um, especially to use you know, SVN or some sort of code control. Um, so always try and put that stuff in code if you can. It makes things a lot easier in the long run. The other thing I wanted to show you was um, UC Views. UC Views is a really cool add-on to Ubercart. Um, Oh, I don't have my internet set up, and I need that for my next demo, so hold on for a second. Um, UC Views defines a lot of the Ubercart tables that aren't already defined to views, so that you can go ahead and, um, and you know, do some cool views integration. And it does some nice stuff out of the box. So drupal.org slash project slash UC views, we use this a lot. It works out really well, especially in conjunction with the views bulk operations. Um, between the two of them, you can do some fun stuff like set up a page for the customer's logistics person. 
to pick orders from, and they only see items on that page that are ready for picking. You know, maybe they're already paid for, and some other conditions met, which you can use conditional actions to define. Um, and then they see that page, they can package them all up, and they can go through and like check off five orders and say, um, you know, these items have been shipped. And with UC Views and Views Bulk Operations, I believe it is, you can um, do that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, order management with Views Bulk Operations. You can do some custom UC orders views. You can also integrate with the product table. Um, Product pairs allows you to do, like users who bought this also bought this, which a lot of people end up requesting, um, and some other cool stuff. So Drupal.org, Project UC Views, and I'm going to demo real quick um, UC Views running on one of the sites we did. Uh, this is Gorn Brothers. I don't have all the images on my local machine, so... Some of the stuff isn't there, but in this case, um, they sell a lot of hats, and a lot of people who like this hat also like this hat, and by adding UC views to this, and then doing the people who bought this also bought this block, um, you know, we can hopefully increase their conversion rate. Just a quick note, without that, um, switching from their old system to their new system, they saw an increase of like 30% in their average order purchase value. Um, so, um, and they also had, I think, an increase in just general conversions as well. Um, and it ended up being a pretty successful launch. Um, so for here, you're, or for this, you're going to go into views. Well, first you're going to enable the UC views module. Um, I guess I'll show you that real quick. There's two different items. There's one that's just integrating the tables themselves. And the other is UC Views for marketing. Um, actually, I guess they've added a third, which is bulk operations. So we've got Ubercart Views. Again, that just adds the products table and, and the orders table and a bunch of other tables to views itself, um, and then the Ubercart views for marketing <coughs> adds some of the marketing slash promotional blocks. Once those are enabled, you can go into views, and by default they're disabled. Um, so you just want to come down, find the, the proper one, and enable it. <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting over a cold. The, is the marketing one separate? Is it a separate download or is it included? It's in the same module, okay. but they're broken out into separate sub-modules. Um, just because um, it's additional code not everybody's going to want, but most everybody wants to at least have views and integration with, with orders. <coughs> so, I'm going to go in here, <coughs> um, and this is the view that it creates. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into it, but you'll see that it has um, order product pair order count. So what that's doing is looking at the uh, order products table and looking at um, all the orders and saying, you know, we're looking at node X and um, uh, actually this is the argument. Um, we're looking at node X and we want to see people who bought node X and what other nodes they purchased. Um, just like any other view, you can go in there and adjust what it does. In this case, I've already pre-edited it to uh, display my uh, custom image cache preset, and I adjusted it to only display three items. So if we go over to a product, um, the other cool thing on this site is we're running Apache Solar, and all of the product navigation is being driven by Solar itself, so you can um, go into men's hats, uh, say select fedoras, and um, you know some other filters down here for you know just show me the classic line or just show me the limited edition. Uh, it's a fun little site. 
But either way, we see here um, <clears throat> we've got three other recommendations. Uh, and apparently people who looked at this or who purchased this product also bought these other three. Um, this hasn't been themed at all. I set it up this afternoon. But it's a good way out of the box to um, add some of that stuff to your, your customer sites. They really like that type of thing, and otherwise it can be a little difficult to do some of those custom queries. Um, in general, I'd like to just spend the rest of the time talking about some, a couple other things I recommend, and then take any questions you guys have. Um, a few other things we always try and do on a customer's site is make sure we disable all the blocks on the checkout pages. In general, when somebody's waiting or you know, trying to enter information to give you money, you don't want to interrupt that and show them other shiny things to distract them. So that's one of our biggest recommendations. Aside from that, we went through and customized, uh, we launched with a non-customized uh, cart and checkout page for this client and then we went through and changed it some to match their existing, or their, the overall site theming. Um, and we saw a, a big increase in, um, in follow through rate from, the, from adding the item to cart to actually going to the checkout page. Um, it was significant. So that's one thing I would also recommend is don't neglect those last few pages of checkout. It's not uncommon that somebody, um, you know, as they're about to give you money, it gets a little, you know, offbeat, uh, or, you know, maybe gets to your checkout page and says, this is a bit ugly, maybe they don't actually know what they're doing. Um, you know, people get nervous when they're giving out check, uh, credit card numbers. Yes? What specifically did you change that um, to increase things? Let me see if I can show you real quick. Uh, so here's what the cart page looks like right now. Here's the checkout page. Um, we added some, we added the background here. Uh, we actually ended up, I think, removing the image because the image didn't always match the attribute selections. So that was one thing that um, we ended up doing. We cleaned up some of the field set stuff. And the other big item is we added a custom button to the review um, order page. Um, and that actually makes a big difference. The other thing to keep in mind is, uh, I should actually put some information in here. If you're ever testing checkout, four and 15 ones will work as a Visa test number. In Ubercart, pull it down. The, the field only takes 18 characters, so or 19 characters, one of the two. So you pull it down and then backspace like three times. Oh, I don't have that set up. Um, For basically any um, any gateway that is in test mode running Visa, there's a list of credit card numbers for the, the different credit card vendors that will um, match the basic algorithm checking um, for different card vendors. That one's the easiest to remember. I don't think there are any other that are quite that simple. Um, so customizing the cart, the review order button helps, as well as the submit button. Um, one thing to note is that the order is created when they view this page, but the order is 
set, I believe, an in checkout. It doesn't actually get saved as a pending order until they click the submit button. There are a lot of people that get to that page and think it's the last page. There's probably some usability issues there that we need to work on. But overall, if you go to, let me do another one real quick and not review it. So here you'll see order three, but, and you'll see that it's set to all active orders. If I go to all orders, you'll see that there's also order four that's in checkout. Um, in my experience, about 75% of those orders can be salvaged and you just pick up the phone and call the person or send an email. So there's, um, you know, if you're getting 100 orders a day, and you've got you know, maybe four or five customers that don't make it to that final, or don't actually say, yes, I want this, um, you know, there could be some money there. It's definitely worth having a CSR call the end client or follow up on them. Or put a note on the page that says your, your order's not complete until you click yeah. this button. Or maybe, I think one thing that we should really do is just move that button up, or um, something to make it stand out a little more. Um, it's, there's definitely some usability issues there. Um, Ubercart's about to come out with version two. Uh, we're in release candidate right now. But really it's, it's pretty much a version one because we ended up releasing Ubercart version one and I believe if Drupal, I think Drupal six was already out at that point or um, you know, basically we, start, we developed it during the whole Drupal five um, cycle and Drupal six was there. So then the first thing we did is said, okay, well we need to get a Drupal six version of it. We're still working on it. We're hopefully going to have one released soon. But we still haven't taken the time to really go through and say, here are all the mistakes we made. Let's fix them and, and do a good, solid you know, version 2. We called it version 2 because we made some significant changes. We used to be dependent on Workflow NG. Workflow NG didn't get ported to 6. Instead, they um, played around for a while and decided to do the rules engine, which is a pretty good system, but by that point we had already developed conditional actions. Um, there's some other changes. Uh, we added, uh, actually there's a patch right now that's going to finish up that support for European clients. Um, and that's, I think, really the major holding issue right now. The other thing, we did a price handler API so that you can modify the price of a product or an order pretty much anywhere in the system. Um, there's enough changes to justify version two, but really it's not like we sat back and said, okay, these are all the things we need to fix. Um, it's really more like a version one. Um, so with that, we'll hopefully do some usability testing. Yeah. Uh, when you customize the checkout pages, did you yeah. do that at the theme level? Uh, we did that with CSS. Um, and I will say that the, the checkout pages, um, they use a pane system. That was something I was hoping to get into today, but decided we really wouldn't have enough time. Um, you can define your own panes. You'll see actually on Gorin, we've got a couple others there. Uh, we've got a discount pane, and we did a custom um, purchase with user points, um, or actually use user points as a discount. Um, you can add all of those. It sort of uses the form API, but there's also some oddities in it. Those are a little difficult to theme, but it's well worth the effort. And yeah, you just control that theming layer. Um, a lot of it you can do with CSS. If you really have to, you can do a theme. So, so for instance, if you want to change like the icons for the credit card buttons, like yeah. the payment pane, then you can do it. I think you, you actually have to, level. to 
um, do some theme hacking there. Just yeah, those are actual images. Um, but that I don't think you could do really at the CSS level. You'd have to go deeper than that. Um, yeah. That's a good call. We should do something. Yeah. Referencing CCK in conditions and actions. So um, it can be done. Um, I don't know that we have. I know that there's not uh, there's not CCK integration as a whole. Right. We have done a couple things to for different clients to add a custom condition based on um, X CCK field. Um, you can pass a node in, sort of. Um, so I think you know the best thing to do there would be um, get the node ID, which is available on the order object, um, and just do a node load and then do your test. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm just you know just via the the interface and doing the custom PHP directly actions that way. Yeah. But I'm just wondering if there was. You know, there was some way to make decisions based on values in CCK. Oh, I'd make it just. Yeah, so I think that'd be a really cool feature. Um, conditional actions needs some, uh, need some work as well. You know, it's a version one. Mm -hmm. The interface is very rough, but it's really powerful. Yeah. And it's um, it's one of those things that sets Ubercard apart from other systems. I have a, I have a really really complex pricing system that I okay. have to build, and we're. We were 80% of the way there, out of the box, with conditional uh, cool. predicates and action form. And the last little bit is this uh, this custom PHP. Cool. The, um, yeah. So we are we are referencing CCK in the actions, but uh, we found a workaround to get cool. away from the conditional. All right. Just doing the like PHP action. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the better way to do that, of course, would be to find your own condition. And yeah. Whatnot. Any other questions? Talk about how you handle testing and can you do any automated testing with the different like one of the things we're running into is we have three different payment providers that we're working with and okay. anytime we tweak something it's you know it's a little yeah uh, scary. Um there's a patch out there that automatically returns the um, the payment pane, all the options for the payment pane, and if you apply that patch, you can um, have that payment data there to select stuff and, and do testing with simple tests. That would be my suggestion. Um, the patch might have made it in. Um, the sure. patch for Ubercard itself? Yeah. Um, I halfway think it made it in, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Um, but I've, uh, I did some basic simple tests for Ubercard's checkout process. Um, We've done some talk with different clients about actually doing some some simple test setup for their individual um, install. I think that's the best way to go there. And moving forward, I think we're going to start doing more of that and working into our development process. Sorry to interrupt there, but yeah, the party has been announced tonight, and it's on the website. Sweet, party's been announced. It's on the website. Where is it? Uh, on campus, on the pub. Starts at eight thirty, goes till midnight. Sweet. Yep, see everybody there. All right. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Um, the other thing I'll toss out there real quick on the subject of like coding stuff, um, you can also embed views in code. I don't know if anybody's really familiar with that, but um, let's see. Views data is how you add your tables, your default views. So you basically define a new views object, and then you can, um, well, basically you just go into and you export your view. You dump that into code, and then you return an array that is um, keyed by the view name and has the view object. And that will dump your view into code, and you have it automatically enabled and everything. That really helps out a lot. Uh, makes it a lot easier to use views in your module. Um, but other questions? Yes. Ubercard's got a test mode, right? Where you kick it in and out of test to check with payment gateways and stuff? I think that's implemented actually at the, it might be in the UC um, credit card 
module. Okay. Um, but I think you can also implement that for individual gateways themselves. It would but, be, yeah. if there was, I, I think I remember at one point seeing it, but I'm not sure it's still around. If it is, it would be incredibly cool if the cart checkout page could auto-fill a default oh, credit card yeah, number and nice. CDV so and test, and test, and test, test, test. And that should be a really good reason. That would serve two purposes. One is it would be handy as you're testing. And second? Second, <laughs> it would prevent you from leaving it on when the yep. site goes live. Yep. That's a good note. Put an issue in the issue queue. Will do. That. Yes. I was just trying to say there's a bookmark list builder that I use for assessing forms that okay. will let you, uh, I don't remember, if you search for bookmarklet uh, okay. form filler or something like that. It's a like, Firefox. And it's, uh, it, it'll work in other browsers too, and okay. it creates a bookmarklet specifically for your, your form. You fill in the, nice. the form, hit one bookmarklet, it generates another one that will fill in that form the same way every time. So it's cool. good for filling out long forms like this. Cool. I spend a lot of time every day populating the checkout form. So, and that would actually, I bet you could even do a module to do that. Yeah, you could, and then you just turn it off if you didn't want it. Yeah. So, um, any other questions? All right. The only other thing I'll leave you with is, um, you know, this is all open source, and you know, just get in and start. Looking at the issue queue, if you think there's something that makes Ubercart better, feel free to, you know, hack on it and submit a patch. Um, you know, we're a pretty open community. We've got like, I would say maybe 25 people or so that are pretty regular um, users looking at the issue queue, throwing ideas out there, making comments, and um, you know, Ubercart, Drupal itself. We try to stay close to Drupal with with the project, but you know, it's pretty open. Don't be shy to get in there and say, hey, this sucks in this way, and here's a way to make it better. Because that's how we get a really killer Ubercart 3 release. So that's uh, my suggestion. Everybody go home, look at the issue queue, pick a patch, and help us get a release candidate uh, 4 and a full release out. So. It's pretty dang great right now. I mean, Thank you. We it's like very it. Useful. I spent. Um, I got into Ubercart because I was working in an e-commerce company, and every week we'd have a marketing meeting, and we'd decide what we could do based on what our shopping cart did, and I was the guy that got to say no all the time. Um, and one day I was just like, this is ridiculous. Why are we making business decisions based on our shopping cart software? So I spent nine months looking at almost every shopping cart system I could use, and Robert Douglas said, hey, you know, we've got this Drupal thing. And I think there's a module for doing e-commerce. And that was probably like four months into it. I was like, no, we just need a shopping cart. And uh, then like another four months later, I saw him at another thing. And he's like, you know, you really should check out Drupal. I'm like, okay. So I looked at uh, the e-commerce module, and it just wasn't quite what I wanted. Ubercart was coming out. It came out a few days later. And, um, and that was it. I, I saw it. It's not perfect by any means. But it's a lot better than anything else I saw because you know it allows you to get in there and customize it for the business conditions. So, um, and get in there and give us your feedback. So that's that.